Today we're going to talk with Barry Frankham and with Brian Davis, um, mostly maybe about the Nipigon Lions Club, but Brian has some information on the Red Rock one as well. So Barry, maybe you can start us off with when it first um, began. The uh, Nipigon Lions Club was chartered November the 5th, 1974, and our, our sponsoring club was Thunder Bay Lions Club. So any materials uh, that uh, we're keeping as much of the Lions Club material here in Nipigon as long as possible, but, but someday it will have to go back to the Chartered Club in Thunder right. Bay. It, it's technically their material. Right. So I realize you said you were not a charter member, but you were early in the club. So it would be interesting if you just mentioned a few names of those people who were really active. Uh, Armand Bouvier was very active. Uh, Herman Brochu was very active. Uh, Bill Locker. Uh, Bill, oh yeah, Bill Bill Locker uh, was tremendously active. He, yep. he, uh, uh, well, people will remember Barry, Barry Claude, and Bill for John the candy Chase, floss. John Chase. Oh no, but for the candy oh, floss. Yes. Oh yeah. They were the candy yes. floss people, really. Yeah. We right. right. Yeah, I remember we bought a second cotton candy machine because the lineups, some of the kids waited in line for 20, 25 minutes to get a cotton candy. We thought that's not right. We bought a second machine to speed it up and Bill was very, very creative. He actually made a protective cover for us because uh, in the arena where we made the cotton candy, a little breeze, it would just dissipate all the cotton candy. There was nothing there. So Bill, he was very inventive. Yeah. He made a cover for us, eh? I remember he made that little metal thing that you put the bag in. We still mm -hmm. use that up until the machine quit. You put the candy floss in that. Yeah, yeah you're right. He was very yeah. inventive. Yeah. Yeah. Right. right. So it's interesting to hear some of the things then that the Lions Clubs did. We, we sponsored a club and... Uh, uh, Beardmore, uh, and we got a good turnout for there. Uh, well, of course, we sponsored uh, Red Rock in 1980. 1980. Yep. So, what, who were some of your first members, Brian? Well, um, myself and Marie Holmes uh, basically started the club. Um, I was the charter president, and Marie was the secretary. Uh, we had uh, we actually had 30 38 members when we started out. Yeah. Um, just about everybody who worked in the mill, Peter Story, Cal Prostansky, um, there was Dunville's, there was uh, Roy, Ronnie Roy, um, you name it. There was uh, a representation from all walks of life in Red Rock. And then not long after that, the, uh, the Lions, Lioness Club started up with, uh, with over 20, 20 ladies involved in the Lioness Club. But thanks to um, the Nipigon Club, um, we had a very successful 20 years and uh, I think it was the fact that Murray and I had to commute to Nipigon in the winters for meetings that we decided we think we can get enough people interested in Red Rock so we could forget about the commute in the winter and, uh, and we did with the, with the blessing of uh, uh, right. people like, like Barry. Because lions don't usually have their own building, where would you have met mostly, Barry? Uh, well, we met at the, uh, to help them out, we would meet at the seniors building oh. to help them with their rent, eh? Oh, okay. Yeah. But you met also at the lower level of pre Preets, Normandy, yeah, yes. didn't you? Yes. Yes. Normandy. Yes. yes. Normandy. I can remember going there. Yeah. Yes. You met there as well. Yeah. I just thought you mentioned had different places in the community that yeah. you met. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the, you mentioned some of the other donations um, that you made, Barry? Well, the one donation of which we were really proud is we gave the new hospital a hundred thousand dollars. Over? Uh, over a period of seven years. And the way we did that was that the, uh, uh, oh gosh, it's what, uh, downtown now, it's, it's all closed up, but it was, uh, was it Mike Smart? Yeah. Mm. Anyway, uh, they said we, we sold uh, these tickets, eh? If you buy a $5, $10, $25 ticket, mm -hmm. if you were lucky, 
you could get your money doubled or something, eh? So that was our fundraising. Now, we could not keep the money. That was a surprise to us. Oh, we thought, this is great for our club, eh? But we could administer the fund mm -hmm. for another organization. Oh. And it went without saying that we decided to give it to the hospital. And our goal was $15,000 a year. And we would make up the difference from our club funds. And uh, mm -hmm. we did it. We raised $100,000 in seven years and wow. paid it all. I think we gave them, it was something like $2,000 over the 100. And it's up at the hospital. You can see it there. They recognize us right. for that. Right. Oh, big yeah. deal. Yeah. So very active members then. Very active. Okay, uh, some other things. Uh, you had a neat picture oh. here of a wheelchair being donated, and you were mentioning a chair to some other little girl that needed. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, what what's the Lions Club? Oh, glasses was mm -hmm. the big thing for glasses, right, yeah, Brian? Still is. Because, oh, it still, it still is. Still is, yeah. yeah. There's a there's a collection box at the hospital by the front desk, and uh, Dan Brown looks after that, and he empties that once a month. He takes that to Thunder Bay once a month, full mm -hmm. of glasses. Wow. Sunglasses, especially the sunglasses, are recycled for albino uh, children and adults in Africa. Wow. There's a community there with a significant number of albino people, and that's where these that's where these glasses are going. Wow. The sunglasses. Good cause. We we had some funny incidents with our glass boxes that we had. People would come in, take off their glasses, <laughs> try a pair, find a pair they liked, and leave their glasses. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. a good cause, though, yeah. for yes. sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, one of the big projects that you you did, the Nipigon Lions Club, um, that I wasn't a part of, I think it happened after I left, was the playground yes. on uh, Duluth Street. Duluth Street. Oh, yes. Yeah, that yeah. vacant lot. Mm -hmm. so you can, yeah. you can, you can we, talk about that one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we started out, uh, like some members, uh, what can I say? We're uncomfortable uh, fundraising or asking for money, eh? So we started out, well, we thought, why don't we just take over this park? We'll cut the grass and clean it up. And I think we actually gave, spent $16,000 on new play equipment. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> uh, we went down and we would uh, weed whack, cut the grass, look after the park. And uh, uh, the kids loved it. Right. There was a Lions Club sign there for a long yeah. time too. Yes. Yes. It was, yeah. uh, was it Ben, Ben, oh, Ben, well, we, he, oh, he was a really yep, good painter. Mm. He, he painted the lion, <clears throat> we called it the uh, Lions Playground Park. Right. Hey, right. He yep. painted the sign. Yep. Right. Yeah. right. That was a very popular playground because yeah. there was nothing in that part of town. No. For the kids, and so it really was. Right. The slide was the best thing. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> a great big slide. But yeah, that that's those are good projects, though. Yeah, that that they did for the community. Yeah, yeah. but Brian, Barry was talking about funding, contributing to people passing through as well, mm -hmm. which uh, which mm -hmm. you said you did often. I can yeah. remember taking pictures of that. Good causes, yeah. right? Yeah. What kind of things did your club sponsor or like donate to Brian? Oh, let me think. Um, we have uh, benches along the water, the waterfront, the boardwalk in uh, in Red Rock uh, Park benches, um, and this is what twenty, thirty years later now, and the plaque is still there. Um, there were memorial, okay. memorial plaques. Mm -hmm. um, um, we had benches uptown, um, in the vacant lots um, on the on the main street. Um, I think we we also supported the hospital and the the handy van, oh, right. the handy van uh, yeah. project. Um, we we chartered in 1980 and we we folded uh, 20 years 20 years to the day. Mm. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, membership started to fall off and. And we just couldn't sustain ourselves any longer. And uh, but we had um, we had a very active membership. And then of course the lioness uh, were allowed to join lions. And I'm mm -hmm. not sure what year that was. Um, 
But you have lioness and nip again too, right? Yes. 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 So lioness too. Yes. Yes. Lioness and then stuff. the lioness were allowed to join lions. Oh. And previous to that date, and I, I sorry, I don't recall it. They were two distinct, separate organizations, oh, right. and lioness were not allowed to join lions. Oh, interesting. So this was uh, it was good for us. It increased our membership when we were starting to slide yeah. a bit. Yeah. Um, I have to say, some of the men in the club didn't like the. Uh, the ladies coming on board. In fact, we had some resignations. Oh, yeah, long-term lions, and it was yeah. um, it was a tough pill to swallow when that wow. yeah when that when that was changed. Was there something about a trail, a historic trail that you guys were involved with? No, no, that was the historical society oh, okay. that, that looked after that. Right. Yeah. But but in Nippy and the Lions Club were well known for their floats and the fishing fell festival parade berry. Yes. 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 And we had July first floats. Oh and you okay. And we also sponsored uh, bed races. Right. Yeah, that was part of the uh, and that was a big fundraiser as well. Right. So any organization or group of people in town you got to you had to have a bed and somebody had to be in the bed and you had four pushers. Yeah. And it basically went from the the rec center up that street up to the legion down past saunders and back around to the rec center again and uh, yeah. yeah it was a, a very popular event yeah. some of the people dressed up i remember ted broomhead dressing up as a as a as a baby with diaper on and <laughs> <laughs> that would be a fun thing to oh, bring it was, back it was fun yeah. and then at the uh, <clears throat> july 1st <coughs> excuse me festivities we also had a dunk tank, so we had the chief, chief of police and the uh, the mayor and important people in town, <laughs> school principals, getting in the dunk tank where yeah, yeah, you threw a ball and down they went. Right. Yeah. But I, I I remember the folks of both both towns, but yeah. walkers were very famous for being creative, eh? Right. On those yeah. floats for sure. Yeah. 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 Won lots of prizes, I think. Yeah. Those were the days, I think, when they had about 30, 35 floats in the parade. Yes, it was yeah. really something. Yeah. See? Yeah. yeah. But did you not have the ducks, too? Thank you for bringing that up. I totally forgot about that. Yes, the duck race. Um, that was an idea we borrowed from the Atacokan Lions Club, actually. Um, and it had been a popular fundraiser for them. And um, for some reason, nobody was supporting it in Atacokan anymore. So. We found out about this, so we bought their thousand little rubber yellow duckies uh, off them and started it on Trout Creek. Um, of course, there were environmental concerns where you, Trout Creek was a, <laughs> a popular fishing hole too. So uh, on on the long on the weekend in July when the July festivities were being held, um, we would dump a thousand ducks into the creek at the at the culvert. And it ran down about well, 200 feet, and we had a weir there that, where we caught them, and we dumped them in uh, 200 at a time. So there was five dumps, and um, every little rubber ducky had a number on it, and you bought a number, a number ducky, and that was a huge, huge fundraiser for I us. Remember yeah. Going there. yeah, yeah, that was fun. So if you did them in, in Lots was there a winner in each. Then you pull you pull out each oh, winner, and then you had a final oh, a final race. a final run. And if oh. we'd only sold six hundred, then it, there would be what the three three runs. So oh. we had a prize for every finalist though. Oh, good. So of course the first ducky through of the of the of the last of the last run right. would would get the thousand dollar or fifteen hundred dollar. Oh, it was big money. It's a good prize. Yes. Well, we had um, yeah, we made a lot of money. Yeah. Good show. Yeah. Yeah. Any other things that you people... Candy Floss was one of the big ones for the Nipigan. Mm -hmm. um, because you went everywhere with the Candy Floss. Let's face it, you just didn't go to the fishing festival. No, they no. came to Red Rock as well. Yeah. Oh, they came... Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We took it down to the arena if there was a hockey tournament on. Mm -hmm. and sold it. And we also got into blue cotton candy, eh? Yes. That, that was popular. Yes. <laughs> okay. But you also came to the schools for special events. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. Was, that was Barry's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. very yeah. popular. Yeah. Claude yeah. and Barry yeah. would be yeah. there yeah. doing candy floss. Did the Lions Club uh, buy equipment for the schools or give out bursaries or awards? Do you remember any of that? 
going on? I, yeah, I wish I could be specific, but we, we did get involved with awards. Was it Jump Rope for Heart that we yeah, were involved there was, with? Yeah, there was Jump Rope, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. okay. And I'm not sure if there wasn't a high school bursary or did something. Did you give like, one? Uh, the, the Red Rock Lions Club mm -hmm. did, yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, and I, I kind of think the, the Nipigon one might have yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. So were the things that you people did together? Oh, there probably are. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> okay. I just thought maybe you did things yeah. together. I didn't know. I don't know about Red Rock Trail uh, between Nipping and Red Rock. Did uh, uh, did we put a bench along the way there? The, where is that? That's a good question. Yeah. I I don't know that. I, I don't know that for sure. Okay. Yeah. So, it, as a Lions Club member, did you people travel to other clubs or e events? We traveled up to uh, Beardmore when we, we chartered their club, and that was a fairly good turnout. And I think we also went up to uh, Geraldton, Long Lac. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, they, well, in Long Lac, they decided that a neat fundraiser would be. I think I was the deputy district governor. They would get the deputy district governor and shave off half his beard. They did it. And so that they fundraised with that. Now, just to show you how word gets around, when I got back, the kids were really good in school. Eh? They, they understood. And I don't know, our inspector, uh, Jack, was Jack, Jack Lowcock, Lowcock. Yep. he got word of this. and He was in the school and he kept walking by my room and looking in the door. And I would stand with, <laughs> so he could see the bearded side. The bearded side, eh? <laughs> so finally, he came right in. He said, I got to see this. <laughs> I'll be looking for a job. <laughs> he but, was really good. But that's unique things you had to yeah. do to raise money. Yeah. yeah. All kinds of unique things yeah. then that you did for... Lions Club. Speaking of traveling, um, we used to meet up with the Marathon Club and the Manitowoc Club and we were in, it was Manitowoc, we all went down and we camped in this huge, huge field um, just outside of town and there was about 100, 150 of us with trailers and campers and oh, oh yeah, it was um, Kids were kids came along, okay. you know, young families. Uh, it was a family long weekend where uh, we got together with lions from the district, well, from our part of the yeah. district that we we very seldom touch base with. So right. that was a that was a, a, a really a really fun time. That yeah, was that's a good that's a good thing to do. Yeah. Now, one of our pet projects was uh, leader dogs, and uh, explain uh, what a leader dog is. A leader dog. Uh, is a dog that's trained to take the person uh, anywhere they want to go and uh, he he's trained to obey. He doesn't chase vehicles or anything. He's just there to lead his owner who is probably maybe only got 10% vision. And one of our local restaurants here told us, you're not bringing leader dogs into my restaurant. You're not bringing dogs into my restaurant. No way. We serve food. You're not bringing dogs in. So we told him, look, we hate to tell you this, but if this dog, you can't say no to this dog. He's going to go into your restaurant. He's a leader dog. And uh, I forget who we got to call him, but someone, we phoned someone, and they said, oh, no, it was with the Ministry of Health. Eh? A leader dog is perfectly fine to go in. Yeah. And after that, there was no problems. So tell about Gene then doing that. So, so uh, one of our, uh, the wives of one of our members, uh, Jean uh, would train a dog and she was an exceptional person with dogs and she would spend I think whew, up to several months training a dog and th those dogs were just absolutely well behaved and uh, she started naming the first dog A and then she named the next dog starting with the letter B and I think she eventually moved out of Nipigan but when she left Nipigan, she was up to E in the dogs. And I think she had to go on to training, training school in at the I, the leader dog, leader dog facility in southern Ontario, and she had to spend time down there. And that's where she met her 
her dog and bonded with oh, the dog yeah. that she was going to be bringing back here. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, she yeah. would come into the schools with the leader dog and that dog was so good with the children. Yeah. Unreal. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's still a very big program. This dogs, for, especially mm -hmm. for blind people, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. a really yes. big program, an important program. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, Jean was very popular with her dogs. She, you're right. They, she socialized the dog all yeah. over the community, yes. which was good maybe in a small town, mm -hmm. because everybody recognized her with the dogs. Yes. Yeah, yeah. The other one, Barry, is that here is a little sheet of paper that tells that the Lions Club were part of the Senior Citizens Banquet, 1980. Yes. So we're, tell, we're, but tell what the Lions Club did mainly, though. Then you talk about transporting, transporting the people. Yeah, you mean uh, from the hospital down, yeah. or yeah, wherever you did. Yeah, the uh, <clears throat> there was a group of uh, people that could not attend the seniors banquet because they had no way of getting down to it. We said, well, we'll drive them down, and we'd go to the hospital, put them in the van and bring them down, drop them off, and when they wanted to go, we'd bring them back. And uh, unfortunately, it had to come to an end because of ministry regulations saying the uh, wheelchairs and that in the back had to be uh, gripped in place or clamped, eh? And we didn't have that, and uh, there was just no way we could install these features. Right. So, so you said you used to take them on outings as well? We would take them out to, to parks in the area. Well, Five Mile Park was a favorite area. And we'd bring uh, a picnic and they'd spend the afternoon out there. And they loved it. it, just to get outside. And then we'd bring them back. And again, for the same reason, I had to drop it because, uh, well, we would have a Lions member sit in the back of the van and hold the chair. <laughs> That was a no-no. <laughs> uh, but you did what you had to do in those days yes, in order to get those people out and about. Yeah, 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 yeah. which was a good thing, yeah. for sure. Yeah. And then you thought, Brian, about the, the I-Van? Yeah, the, uh, the I-Van would come into town um, once a year, and the, um, the Nipigon and Red Rock Lions Club uh, supported, supported that. And um, also we supported the Handy Van. Uh, project. Oh, okay. Yeah, with, uh, at the hospital, through the hospital. Oh, through the hospital yeah, one. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. And that was financially mm -hmm. helping mm -hmm. them with that. Yeah. yeah. And the Red Rock Lions Club also partnered with the Nipigon Lions Club in making sizable donations to the hospital when the, when the hospital was being was being mm -hmm. developed, yeah. was right. being built. Right. Yeah. So the IVAN now, it's interesting. I wonder who, who Sponsored that because now, of course, it's all the CNIB now that brings the I van here. But it would mm -hmm. be interesting mm -hmm. if that was who the sponsor was, and then you had to pay to bring them here. That would be what you were. We made a donation to, to them. them. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 And yeah. we did. We did support families locally, um, sending them if they had to go out of out of province or out of this area for uh, eye operations. Uh, we would uh, we would sponsor them. Apply to Lions International for for grants to uh, to help them out with with uh, travel costs, um, flights, uh, hotels, etc. Right, right. Yeah. So Barry, just tell about your club helping someone else with their wood. That I think that's an interesting little story. Yeah. The uh, there was a a family oh, on, rurally. On, uh, rurally yeah, on the road on the Cameron Falls Road. Uh, they had no wood, and we had heard that they needed help. So we brought them a truckload of wood, and we cut the wood up, and we split it, piled it, and uh, left it for them, eh? And I think they, they appreciated that to no end. Yes, I guess so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's for sure. All those little mm -hmm. things are what made yeah. the Lions Club, I think, well known. It's little projects that add up, isn't it? It's not yeah. always the big ones. And it was the members who stayed with the Lions because they knew they were helping people in need around the community mm -hmm. right. and, uh, right. and and around the world, actually. Right. Yes, because Lions Club is international. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So some of your fundraising went to international or stayed local? No, international projects too. Yeah. 
We tried to keep the both of it locally, I think. Yeah, hey, sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So mention a few yes. more of your members there, Barry. Pick up your your thing there. Just read off some of the names oh, there, because okay. I think you had some, uh, even though we're in the picture, but... Okay. Uh, oh, yeah. It, oh, oh. What, uh, Tom Chan. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. Yeah. He was good. Uh, and I mentioned uh, our, our Reeve, John Pazook. He, he was a member. I didn't know that. And Harold Clark. I Harold didn't Clark. know. No. no. John Stavropoulos. John the, Stavropoulos. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, those are prominent people in the community then. And uh, Walt Gibbons, he was oh. the singing minister. Right. And yes. uh, he was our entertainment when they, uh, uh, our Thunder Bay Club, our sponsor, came down to Nip again. They came down with 20 members. And I thought, oh. Good grief, 20 yeah. members. Yeah. What are we going to do with these guys? Yeah. Walt said, don't worry, I'll take care of it. And he sang and entertained them for oh, 40 minutes, non-stop. They left and they were beaming, they were grinning, they were happy. They said, this is great, you guys have got a wonderful club here. Yeah. And well, it's good. all thanks to Walt. Right, right. <clears throat> No, I, and the, one of the things that I saw, Arch Sitch's name, I remember him, you remember that ball throw we had at the fishing festival? Yes, yes, yes. He had that great big screen yeah. in the back and you would try and knock the milk bottles over. Very popular. Yeah. Um, again, I just remember Art being connected to that one. Yeah. yeah. Was, and uh, Bill, Bill would spin the wheel, eh? Right. The wheel, yeah. And people are still looking for that wheel, Barry. Yes. Yes, they are. People would like to find that roulette wheel because it was such a popular thing. Yeah. I mean, imagine being 12 years old and you could go and bet uh, on that wheel. Yeah. <laughs> at the fishing festival and nobody would say anything. No, no, no. <laughs> Great fundraiser. Yeah. Yeah, popular yeah. things, yeah, for yeah. sure. I remember having a, uh, a governor's visit Barry at the Normandy Hotel, and I think it was might have been Steve Kutcher. Would it have been Steve Kutcher? Could have been. Could have been Steve Kutcher. Anyway, we had a tremendous turnout, and they were so impressed by the work that the Nipigon Lions Club did. Um, small but mighty, did many many great things. Um, but the community supported right. the mm -hmm. Lions Club um, immensely, and any any venture we got into. Right. The community support right. was uh, was really incredible. Yeah. Anyway, um, at this dinner, and of course it was a five star dinner served at the Normandy Hotel, and there happened to be parsley served with something. Well, I love parsley, so I was sitting at a table of maybe five or six other people, and I asked them if I could have the parsley off the plate. Anyway. Governor Steve, District Governor Steve, saw me collecting parsley off the plates. So it was just about the end of the evening, and he said, I have one last presentation to make. He said, would uh, uh, Lion Brian Davis please come to the front? What's this all about? I'm just a regular Lions Club member. I'm nothing special. So I walked up to the front, and he said, on behalf of all the lions and lionesses and and spouses and guests here, I want to present you with this. And he reached down and he had a dinner plate piled with parsley. <laughs> and his wife had gone around to all the tables after people had finished their dinner and had taken the parsley off all the empty, empty plates and piled it on the stand. There was a mountain of parsley and he presented me with this plate of parsley. That's the fun things to remember. That was a fun thing. About to lions, yeah. yeah, get together. So that's for sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay. Any other little things you can think of? That gives us a good, a good snapshot anyway of both clubs because both clubs were active in both communities. Very, very much. And, yeah, and yeah, so it's a good much. snapshot yeah. of that. So we want to thank Barry and Brian both for participating today.